musical sense, but oh, but in the sense that you've been doing it for a long time. Jim Napier, nice to have you. Well, thank you. It's good to be here. And his daughter Camille joins us as well, who's been writing with her dad for a long time, since you were, what, eight years old, did yes. you say? Uh, tell me a little, first of all, about what it feels like, Camille, to get up for the very first time. Is it frightening to go up? I was a little bit frightened because when you first go up, everything gets really small all of a sudden, but um, then after that, it's really calm because there's no turbulence in the balloon, and you just go with the wind. And when you land, there's a little bit of a jolt, but I was just a tiny bit frightened, but I knew Dad was a good good pilot, and he gave me a soft landing. So as long as Dad was there, you <laughs> thought it was okay? Yes. <laughs> Have you ever had any close calls where you were really frightened? Well, yes, Jim. In any type of aviation, you'll have close calls. Mm -hmm. In ballooning, uh, if you're operating over a metropolitan area, it's quite possible to get becalmed. And uh, you're slowly running out of fuel, and you look down, there's no place to land but streets, skyscrapers, and parking lots. Also, you have to be careful for high-tension wires, which are the biggest enemy of, of the balloonists. And uh, as a matter of fact, over 60% of the fatal accidents in ballooning, hot air ballooning, are caused by high tension wires. You had a close call with those yourself. I touched them once and spent a month in the hospital because of it. Mm. But you never thought once about quitting, did you? No, I didn't. <laughs> I enjoy the sport too much, and I accepted that as just part of the risk that that are involved. Yeah. You told me earlier that you'd been a flying enthusiast all your life. Why hot air ballooning? What got you into that phase of flying? I started off uh, at age 16 and got a pilot's license, mm -hmm. private pilot. Then spent uh, 25 years in the military as a military pilot, flying helicopters and fixed wing aircraft. Mm -hmm. And when I retired from the service, I wanted to try a different type of flying and it turned out to be hot air balloon. A lot of people, I suppose, would regard this as more dangerous than riding in a plane, perhaps just for the mere fact that you're not enclosed. Is it more dangerous? <clears throat> I, I suppose hot air ballooning is more dangerous than uh, commercial aviation. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a sport. You're working with nature. There are a lot of uncertainties to it. And uh, I believe the safety record, though, with hot air ballooning compares most favorably with other aviation sports like hang gliding or ultralight. Yeah. It's a safer sport than those two. I guess one drawback, for some people at least, is the fact that you really have little control once you get in the air as to where you're going. Well, that's what makes it such a good sport. You've got to work with nature. Yeah. If there was some way they could put a propeller on that balloon and you could go wherever you wanted to, the, the sport would be ruined. And <clears throat> you do have the ability to change the altitude uh, in a balloon. You can go up or down, and, and you find the winds are different in speed and direction at different altitudes. Also, when you're uh, flying close to the ground, there are wind currents <clears throat> around by valleys, tree lines, that uh, the more experience you get, uh, you learn to read these winds and pretty well can make the balloon go where you want to go, mm -hmm. understanding that, that if the wind's coming out of the north, <clears throat> you can't fly into the north. Generally, you're going to be headed southward. Yeah. Here's some pictures now uh, that we took, what, a couple of weekends ago of you going up in your balloon? Yes, this is the inflation part of the flight. It usually takes us about 20 minutes to inflate the balloon and prepare it for flight. That's a fan. We're putting cold air into the envelope so that uh, we can put open it up enough that the burner can get in there and actually inflate it, which you see now. Uh, these pictures uh, show the crew at work. Dr. James Hill is there, two of my sons and one of their friends. It takes about three men in the pilot to operate a flight. These are pictures made over Bowling Green early one morning. It was a rather overcast day. Uh, we we're flying pretty much into the east, and you see the sun coming up there. Yeah. 
That's incredible. Beautiful pictures. Now, you've got a couple of races coming up, what, next weekend in Nashville? And yes. the next in Evansville. That's, that's correct. How do they do that? How do you race a hot air balloon? <clears throat> well, there are basically two ways, and there are variations on these ways. Uh, one way is a target-type race, where balloons fly into a designated target on the ground. Mm -hmm. And, of course, the balloonist that comes closest to the target wins the race. Another way is called a hare and hound race. One balloon takes off, and then 10 minutes later, the competitive balloons take off, and the hare flies for 45 minutes or an hour, and the winner is uh, one of the hound balloons who lands the closest to me. Mm -hmm. Jim, thanks. Pleasure having you. Our pleasure. The balloon and the water.